Am I in focus? BMX STEM Part 1 Last time I 3D printed something, it was the Sprocket, and that video did really good, it got a lot of really good feedback, so I'm back with another 3D printed video. And this time, as you can see, it's a STEM. I'm nervous about this, because the one thing that scares me on my bike is always something on the front end snapping. But I really want to see how far we can push the boundaries with 3D printing technology. And I really want to explore the different uses and the different fields in which it can be beneficial. Now obviously as you can tell, I did take a lot of the base measurements off of the stem that I ride normally, which is a Colt Salvation V2. Most of them are just base measurements that would apply to any stem. Just basic standard dimensions so that I have something to base my design off of. Sorry, I have to put my sunglasses on because I have a light right there and it's kind of blinding me. Anyways, when I did the sprocket video, I got a lot of people asking me to go more in depth with the process, the design process, the print process, and so that's what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to tell you guys about the printer I use, the material I use, give you an idea of how I designed the model, what software I designed the model on, and the steps that I take to take it from a 3D model on my computer to an actual file that the printer can read and then make into an actual object. The CAD software that I usually use is SolidWorks, but I designed this on FreeCAD. FreeCAD is a free, obviously, open source 3D modeling software that you can download for free. It has a few limitations if you're making like very, 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 very complex parts, but for 99.9% .9 of the things that you probably plan on making, FreeCAD will work just fine. So we got the measurements that we need, and we designed the model. I did everything that I could to limit the amount of material that I cut out in the design because I do want it to be extra sturdy. I don't want to be trying to cut out pieces of the stem that I think aren't important because I want to save a little bit of material or cut down on weight only to find out that it compromised the structural integrity of the part. So we got the part looking how we want it to. Now we got to export these. Now that it's all laid out the way we want it to be, we're going to go ahead and send these files to the printer. And then once these files get sent, we'll be good to go. Alright guys, the files have been sent. We are ready to start this print at a moment's notice. Let's talk about 3D printers for a little bit. There's a few types of 3D printers that you're going to come across. I'm going to go over those with you and give you a little bit of a, a baseline. Alright, now there are seven different types of 3D printing technology, but you really only need to know about three of them. That's FDM, or Fused Deposition Modeling, a Stereolithography Machine, which is what this is, otherwise known as SLA, and a DLP printer, which stands for Digital Light Processing. FDM, DLP, and SLA are by far the three most common types of 3D printers that you'll find. Now as you can see, that is a Mono Price V2 Maker Select, that is an FDM printer. The way that works is you have a solid material that's just getting fused, melted, and molded into a different shape, and then it just lays it down layer by layer until you have a part. So you're basically just reshaping solid material into something different. Most of the 3D printers that you'll find in the $100 range to the low to mid thousand dollar range are going to be FDM printers. If you take a step above an FDM printer, you get into SLA and DLP. SLA and DLP are very similar. Okay, but what about a stereolithography machine like this? Well, the way that this works in all SLA and DLP printers alike is you have a pool of photosynthetic resin and a build platform lowers down into that resin and then there's a very powerful, very precise laser that shines on that platform and whatever point it hits on the platform, that section of resin is going to solidify because of the high power UV light. And then the build platform moves up a tiny bit it prints the next layer until you have a complete part. DLP and SLA printers work using the same principles. The only real difference is that a DLP printer will print one whole layer at once, whereas an SLA printer, the laser moves from point to point until it finishes the layer and then it moves on to the next one. So if speed is what you're looking for, then you need to get a DLP printer. The reason why I choose this printer to print the bike parts as opposed to my FDM printer, even though it is a lot more expensive and it uses a lot more material, the quality is an order of magnitude nicer. Because one of the biggest problems with an FDM printer isn't the accuracy and it isn't the quality, but when the filament is getting laid down layer by layer like that, then you get these little air gaps and these little pockets that can weaken the structure, not sealed, depending on what you're working on, that might be important. With an SLA printer, that's not a problem. And also, it's a lot easier to tell the individual layers 
visually when you look at the final piece on an FDM printer, whereas with an SLA or a DLP printer, there are no layers, at least not that you can see, because all the actual printing is being done inside of the resin. Now because there's no air gaps, the part is a lot stronger, so that's why I use this printer. However, for some of the upcoming prints like bar ends, peg sleeves, stuff like that, I do plan on using my FDM printer just to show you guys that you can still print good stuff on cheap printers. It's not a matter of the equipment you have. If you know how to use it right, then you can get just as good quality out of a cheap printer as an expensive one. That's it you guys. That's basically all you really need to know. So the print is started now. I'm printing using the Formlabs Tough V4 resin. Printing at a 0.05 millimeter layer height. That's 50 microns. To put that into perspective for you, 100 microns is about the width of a sheet of paper and about the width of a piece of human hair. A red blood cell is 7 microns. It can go down to 0.25, but that's only for prints that need ultra high resolution. And that's all there is to it you guys. The print's going to be done in the middle of the night, which is perfect because that means that when I get up in the morning, I can set it out, let it cure while I go to my appointments, and then once I get back home, it'll be fully cured and ready to go. So be sure to tune in tomorrow, guys, so that we can find out how this goes. I'm really nervous, but I'm excited and I'm confident. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think of videos like this in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the daily uploads and click the bell to get notifications so you can watch them as soon as they come up. I'll see you guys on tomorrow's video. It's going to be a good one. Peace!